What's up, everybody? Welcome to the very first episode of What A Week. A little background info, this series was supposed to be released a few weeks from now, but after the week that we just had, the timeline needed to move up. This was truly a historic week, especially in terms of media. This kind of a video is what we will release on a week like this, where there's too much info and too many videos to make. There's a lot of content in this video, and I know some of you might only be here for certain things. If that's the case, don't worry, I have meticulously put timestamps in the description so you don't have to randomly look through the video to find the content that you came here to see. Also, this entire episode will be broken down into clips and released throughout the week. So make sure to check those videos out as well. And as always, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff, because it's a small click for you, but it means the world to us. So without further ado, here we go. Well, for those of you who might not know, The Mandalorian just came out with a brand new episode this Friday and gave us a very solid episode. Although, I'm not going to say it was better than the last one since that one was pretty insane. This one had its moments. Spoiler warning, by the way. Basically, the whole episode revolved around Mando going to this Imperial base with Bill Burr's character to retrieve Moff Gideon's coordinates. Obviously, now that Moff Gideon has kidnapped Baby Yoda, the Mando, Boba Fett, and Cara Dune are going to attack Gideon. I won't call this episode a filler or a side quest because it showed a lot of growth in both our main characters and Bill Burr's character. Bill Burr's character showed growth by actually helping the Mando a lot this time around, and according to Cara Dune, by the end he earned his freedom. The Mando showed growth because he was faced with a big problem. And yes, I'm just realizing that was a really bad pun. Mando has to choose between the kid and the way. And at the end, he chooses the kid and takes off his helmet in front of other people. At the end of this episode, we get a really sick scene where Mando basically sends a warning to Moff Gideon, telling him that he is coming for the child. But man, this episode had some great fight scenes too. It wasn't slow by any means. Also, I'm glad we got to see a lot of the Slave One ship in this episode. But here's something I don't get. Why would Gideon destroy the Razor Crest when that was the ship that he had put a tracker on? I guess it was because he didn't know Bobo was there and he wanted to leave the Mando stranded on the planet. Regardless, I'm pretty shocked, in a good way, at how the people behind this show keep delivering such amazing episodes week after week. Now there are some theories and hints floating around for the finale coming out December 18th. Moff Gideon actor Giancarlo Esposito has mentioned a few times that there will be a big duel between him and another character. First I thought that was going to be against Ahsoka, but now I'm sure it's going to be against the Mando using the Beskar staff. Also, there are talks of another Jedi showing up in the Mando season finale, since as far as we can tell, Baby Yoda was able to make contact with someone. The theory is backed up by this scene right on your screen, where another person is seemingly communicating with Baby Yoda. Hopefully it's Luke, because that would be amazing, but I wouldn't put my money on a Luke cameo to be honest. Ezra is another possibility, and a lot more likely to appear. Also, it could be Cal, who I forgot to mention in last week's video. Technically, Cal is already casted in the Fallen Order game, played by Cameron Monaghan. So that does increase the likelihood of a Cal cameo, but we gotta wait till next week to see for sure, obviously. Before I move on from this topic, be sure to drop a comment about what you thought about this episode and your predictions for the finale. We love to read and respond to all of our comments. Alright then, moving on, Fortnite announced some big things this week and proved once and for all that Fortnite is not exactly the dead game as many seem to claim all over their Twitter comment sections. I do love the Fortnite themed memes that Fortnite players drop in the replies of these dead game commenters though. Here are a couple of them that really caught my eye, so shout out to the people who posted these. Fortnite's newly released Season 5 is cementing Fortnite as not only a game but a platform. After the Marvel collaboration in Season 4, they brought in The Mandalorian for Season 5. Now, more recently, they've collabed with Kratos from the God of War PS4 game and Master Chief, who is a fan favorite from Xbox's Halo. And have recently announced a new collab with two characters from The Walking Dead. And Donald Mustard has said that there are a lot more collabs on the way. But beyond that, I think Fortnite is moving forward just because of the fact that they finally have a complex storyline. The multiple realities aspect was honestly the best thing Fortnite could have done and has some people speculating about what the future holds like crazy. Anyways, Fortnite has been one of my favorite games for a very long time and it doesn't look like it's going anywhere anytime soon. 
Oh yeah, and speaking of crazy collabs, Fortnite just once again collabed with Disney, in which if you make any cash purchase from Fortnite, you get two months of Disney Plus for free. And the only reason I mention this now is because it's a great segue into our next and main topic, Disney. Disney has dropped some of the most amazing news of the year in this year's Disney Investor Day. They announced a ton of new Marvel, Star Wars, and Pixar content. Let's start out with the Marvel stuff. We've gotten a new WandaVision trailer and a new Falcon and the Winter Soldier trailer. A new trailer for a series called What If and the one I'm most excited about, an exclusive clip for Loki. Before we get into our trailer breakdowns, we should talk about the announcements that we got without footage for a minute. Hawkeye has been announced for late fall 2021, and Haley Steinfeld has been confirmed by the studio to be part of that series. Feige also came out and announced three shows called Ironheart, starring Dominique Thorne, Armor Wars, starring Don Cheadle, and Secret Invasion, which is personally one of my favorite storylines, and I can't wait to see this in live action. Also, a quick thing about Armor Wars, I think this will have something to do with Justin Hammer and potentially AIM, or another big tech company trying to recreate the Stark armor for their own purposes. Feige mentioned that the series is meant to be exploring one of Stark's biggest fears. Feige also gave some casting updates on the already announced Moon Knight, She-Hulk, and Ms. Marvel. Notably, Tatiana Maslany will play the lead role in She-Hulk, with Mark Ruffalo's Bruce Banner also set to appear. While Miss Marvel star Iman Vellani's Kamala Khan will also appear in Captain Marvel 2. Marvel Studios is also working on a new Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special for Disney Plus due in 2022. That'll be directed by James Gunn, and the special will film alongside the upcoming Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, also directed by Gunn, set for release in 2023. There's also an I Am Groot series of short films starring everyone's favorite Groot. But Feige is still not done, there is so much more. The Doctor Strange movie is expected to tie in with WandaVision and the next Spider-Man movie. I think it's safe to say that the Spider-Verse is actually happening, especially since Alfred Molina has also been casted for the movie. So don't be shocked when Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield get confirmed. We called it on the channel by the way, go ahead and check that video out, link in the description. Ant-Man 3 and a new Fantastic Four MCU movie also just got confirmed by Feige, which are two huge announcements. Lastly, but definitely not at all least, Feige has confirmed that Black Panther 2 will not recast the late Chadwick Boseman's character, T'Challa, as a sign of respect for him. And I just want to say that this was an excellent decision in my opinion, because nobody else can truly do that role justice the way Chadwick did. Rest in power, Chadwick Boseman. Shuri will be taking over as the main character of the Black Panther movies, which is another great decision I think they took. Alright, so let's get into the trailer breakdowns. First off, WandaVision. Now from the looks of it, WandaVision seems to be a sitcom in a pocket reality. This is definitely going to be an interesting show and tough to pull off. This trailer didn't give us much new information, but it did tell us a couple of new things. By the way, if you want to go see the original trailer breakdown that I did, go ahead and watch that video, link also in the description. Originally, in that video, I thought that Wanda was doing all this herself because she missed Vision. But it seems like from this trailer that this whole thing is being done to her. As someone says during the trailer, Now the person I believe to be behind this is Agatha Harkness, an extremely powerful witch who is to be played in this show by Katherine Hans. Thanks to Feige confirming that Doctor Strange's Multiverse of Madness will be tied into this show, it seems like the theory that Wanda is going to be the villain of the Doctor Strange movie is pretty valid. I believe that at some point, Doctor Strange is going to be called upon to help Wanda, and while doing so, separating her from Vision and her children in the pocket dimension, she'll snap and turn against everyone in the real world. This show is releasing on January 15th, and obviously we'll know more about that then. Secondly, we finally got a real trailer from Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Overall, just looking at this trailer, we see that the world isn't doing very well after the death of Captain America, and probably in part because of the blip. Falcon seems like he's going to struggle to live up to the legacy of Captain America, because those are some huge shoes to fill. We all love the dynamic between Falcon and the Winter Soldier, and it looks like the main villain is going to be Zemo. 
It is also possible that Zemo is behind what looks like riots going on in the trailer. This show is probably going to be more grounded than the other Marvel shows. They're going to be more multiverse and magic based. But this looks great and it will be dropping in March, not long after the end of WandaVision. 2021 is looking to be a huge year for Disney. On the other hand, the What If series is something completely different. It's explaining scenarios in the Marvel Universe that could have happened. The stories that I believe will be there according to the trailer include Captain Britain, in which Peggy gets the Super Soldier Serum rather than Steve, T'Challa becoming Star-Lord rather than Peter Quill, and some stories revolving around Nick Fury, Thor, Doctor Strange, Iron Man, and what looks like Marvel zombies. But this series is easily going to be one of the craziest, if not the craziest, in all the upcoming Marvel series. I personally have always loved the animated content from Marvel early on, back in the Avengers EMH days, and have yet to see some good animated Marvel stuff like EMH after EMH was cancelled. Hopefully this will be more along the lines of that rather than some of the other not so great Marvel animated content we have seen recently. We start off with Loki in that endgame scene where he escapes. We see the scuffle over the Tesseract and Loki looking around. And right after that, Loki gets his hands on the Tesseract and teleports out of there. He wakes up on a sand planet and then it cuts right to him in cuffs and what looks like a power inhibitor collar wearing something that says TVA on his shirt, which is, as we suspected, the Time Variance Authority. My theory is that he will become one of their agents and help fix the damage that he caused by getting the Tesseract. Seems like we're going to see a bit more of Asgard in this show as we hear a reference to Thor and Balder and we also know that Sif is going to make an appearance. But like I mentioned earlier, Marvel updates weren't the only thing Disney announced. The Star Wars universe is also being prepped to be taken to the next level. Lucasfilm announced two new movies, one called Rogue Squadron and the other an unnamed movie directed by Taika Waititi. Yes, Taika Waititi, the man who made Thor into arguably the best MCU hero. But that's not even where Star Wars truly shined. An Ahsoka spin-off has also been confirmed along with a Lando and Obi-Wan Kenobi show in which Hayden Christensen will be returning as Darth Vader. Now this has got the internet super divided. I know, shocker. But half the population seems to think that Hayden is a great actor while the other half continuously tries to bash him for his prequel acting. Here's my very simple and humble take. I think Hayden is going to be great, not only because they have learned from their previous mistakes, but also because the guy is much more experienced now. And I personally didn't even find him to be that bad in the prequels. Also, speaking of Hayden's return as Vader, it has been hinted that we'll see another fight between Vader and Obi-Wan. If you think about it, this is not far-fetched at all. In fact, in the original trilogy, when Luke told Vader he sees good in him, Vader replies, Obi-Wan once thought as you do. So it is possible that the reason Obi-Wan seems so uninterested in helping Vader in the original trilogy, and the reason he called him Darth, was Obi-Wan had tried to help Anakin once more after the Mustafar fight, and was unsuccessful. I know that this isn't really the case, as the story was still being fully developed at the time, and the decision to make Vader into Anakin wasn't exactly taken before the first movie. In fact, Anakin was supposed to be alive in some early versions of the script. But the point is, they can make it look like that was the real reason. And lastly, we got one new trailer for Star Wars for a show called The Bad Batch. We saw The Bad Batch in The Clone Wars Season 7, and they became a fan favorite pretty quickly. I, for one, loved those episodes from the season, and am especially excited because, from the trailer, it looks like this show is going to be going into after Palpatine takes over. Also, it would be interesting to see how Order 66 affected The Bad Batch as well. Finally, Disney also talked about Pixar, and there was a lot of content there, including some remakes of fan-favorite films and a ton of original content. I would go into detail talking about all these announcements, but honestly, I feel like it would be super redundant on my part. Honestly, Disney and Pixar together could sell me literally anything, and I would buy it with a smile on my face. I will say that the one that caught my eye the most was the Buzz Lightyear movie in which Buzz will be voiced by none other than Chris Evans. Also, 
Speaking of people named Chris who happen to be part of Marvel, Chris Hemsworth is going to be part of a National Geographic series along with Will Smith. Also, also, speaking of huge movie stars like the ones I just mentioned, Harrison Ford is going to be returning for his fifth and final Indiana Jones movie. Whew. Was that all of it? Yeah, I think that's all of it. In conclusion, Disney just dumped a mountain of amazing information right on us, and you know what? I'm all for it. Mickey Mouse is coming for the streaming service throne, and all you other streaming services better be scared. I think it's safe to say that 2021, 2022, and possibly even 2023 are going to be known as the years of the mouse. I expect a ton of more about all of these amazing series to be dropped over the next few weeks, and we will be here, as always, with all the new theories and news. Hey guys, if you made it to this part of the episode, first of all, thanks for watching. Your time is valuable and we're honored that you're choosing to spend it with us. This episode obviously took a lot of time since there was a lot of watching, researching, writing, and of course, the most painful of them all, editing. It would mean a lot to us if you would drop a comment, like, and or subscribe because we are a relatively small channel and we need all the support we can get. Thanks again for watching and see y'all next time.